Um, this is great. I think you can pitch easily pitch this to uh, wedding planners just because it's such a beautiful, luxurious uh, photo booth. Let's just be honest. It's a beautiful booth. All right, let's go ahead and answer some more questions. The Oh, so Jose writes, how about the flash on top? Now, I have just in, we have here. I'll be right back. Let me show you guys someone. So on one of my booths, I have a flash head. It's called the Explore Flash Point 600, and it's a very expensive flash head. I don't need any cables. If you guys seen the videos on YouTube, it doesn't need any cables. It has an integrated battery, but it's an, it's crazy expensive because it has an output of 600 watts. It's a, it's a professional flash. But I'm going to be making a video on the Godox. This flash head right here is under $140. It's 300 watts, and this is going to be the perfect setup with your new DSLR uh, photo booth right here. And this already comes with the ring, so then, I'm sorry, with the baby pin or the, the camera flash rod. So you're just going to mount this. I'm also going to show you guys exactly what umbrella I am using, how big the umbrella is, and also that same umbrella I'm using, it could be transformed into a white umbrella. And um, I got a lot of cool videos coming for you guys. Remember, this channel is all about education. What's up, Madison? All right, let's see. Um, Carlo, Carlo writes, I was late to this live, but that's okay because it's being recorded. We are 56 minutes in. I'm going to be bouncing out of here in about a few more minutes. So this is the part where you guys just come at me with all the questions because I got more work to do. This is part of my job, so I'm here with you today. Let's go ahead and get it. Um, I was late to the live, but I heard you saying the 360 is dying because of the competition. Uh, what about regular DSLR photo booth or iPad photo booth is dying too? So the 360 guys, here, here, let me simplify that. The 360 booth is not dying from a consumer's point of view. The consumer wants a 360 production. Right now, I want to say close to 60% of my bookings for June are for the 360. By the way, guys, June, I have like 10 events, crazy month, right? And so what's happening is the consumer still wants the 360, but the business service provider has a lot more competition now that has a 360 booth. Some of them are not even legit businesses. They're just using it as a side hustle. And so then that feels to us, who are actually charging a premium price like it's dying down because they're going on our websites and they're seeing that there are prices are a bit more higher than the person down the street doing it for a side gig for, for just extra money. And so it feels like the, the demand is dropping because all these other people that jumped into the space are now, you know, getting those leads and some of those actual leads are turning into bookings. And for us, well, we might be too expensive for the person now, because the person, the consumer is looking at these prices and saying, I'm just going to go with them because they're $200 cheaper. Mm. But here's the thing. A lot of those people came into the space after the photo booth expo. Every year after the photo booth expo, a lot of people get motivated and start a photo booth business after the photo booth expo because the photo booth expo that's what it does it promotes photo booth business startups and so they provide you with hardware software and all the things that you need to start your business so it makes total sense right now why during the uh, second quarter we, we have a lot of competition a lot of people came into the space so now it's all about creativity and marketing all right and there's ways that i'm able to beat the competition because you know i'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to certain things but here we go uh, that's a good. That's a great question, Carlo. I don't think it's dying. I think it's just becoming a lot more competitive. But people still want a 360 booth. Uh, AJF Memories. That booth looks awesome. It is freaking awesome. Thank you. It's available on my website. Uh, Sleek Multimedia checking in from Houston. What's up? Uh, Jazza Sound and Media. The best flash Godox MS 300. I'll check that out one day. But for right now, I got to check this puppy out. Because there's a version, there's a V version, and then there's a 300. So I got the V version. I'm, I'm going to put a video for you guys so you guys can save money but still have a high production setup. 
Um, let's see. Where are we at? Okay. AJF Memory is checking in from Waco, Texas. Sat right next to you at the photo booth expo in the front row. What's up, AJF Memories? Uh, DJ Randy writes, has anyone on here noticed that YouTube is pausing the audio on older YouTube shorts? They're coming down. And so it's important, guys, to, to one, convert your Instagram profile into a business profile. And you'll notice the videos that I post don't have these catchy trending songs because it's set up as a business profile and I don't want to get copyrights for songs that I, I don't own because I'm, use, I'm using it as a business profile, which means that I'm promoting as a business, which is why I don't have access to those songs that are actually trending right now on the radio. I haven't heard the radio word in a long time. Life's Woman's 360. I'm Daniel. I just started my 360 business. I'm using TouchPix. What do you think is the best? <clears throat> I think the best is Snapic. For now, uh, I'm sure I'll change my opinion in the future when I come across uh, a software that's one more economical in price and two can offer exactly what we need to provide a solid production. I don't use touch picks. I stopped using touch picks over a year ago. Uh, someone writes, uh, AJF memories writes, we just bought an overhead 360 and a GoPro still deciding on the best soft for any suggestions. Just know that you can, you can try Snapic as a seven day free trial. The link is going to be in, in all the videos on YouTube. You can try out Snapic. Uh, for free for seven days explore uh snapic because when it comes to videos i think snapic that's where it shines the most just because you can add so many crazy effects to it jose writes how do you connect the camera to the camera and the printer jose if you go on my youtube channel right after this meeting here today sir you'll see that i put out a video on how i connect the the printer onto the hub and make it all work together let me do this though. Let me create more videos for you guys on the setup process so that each video contains information that's relevant to what you're looking for. Good question, Jose. Um, Tina, do you plan on helping with a new design just for the iPad booth? Jeremy has the older designs. I have been debating on the iPad versus DSLR booth, but I want to do, I want to be able to do drop offs. So Tina, that's a, that's a decision. That's a tough decision. So um, if you do the drop-off concept, just know that these have to have internet one way or another, whether it's Wi-Fi or whether it has built-in cellular data, which means they'll either have a SIM chip or you'll have a plan with your service provider and you'll be paying anywhere from maybe $30 a month for unlimited plan to drop these off when you're not there. And so the profit margin on these is not very high when you're doing the drop-off concept. So you're going to need at least two to three of these every single week to drop them off to make like maybe $600, $700, depending on how much profit you're making per drop off. But keep in mind, you're going to need a license for the software for the one drop off. You're going to need seller data for the drop off, right? And you're going to need someone dropping those off for you and picking those up. So I want you to factor that price in. I want you to factor in the cost of the data and the cost of the license for the photo booth software when it comes to the drop off concept. Okay. 